groups. Memo groups? Oh, those are the groups that are so high and so soft. You can't even walk the distance it takes to hail a cab. Do you know how many people told me I was a genius? Mm. All these things to do and places to go without walking. The detour came without warning. I was carried past my gold braided doorman, the statue the private park, and taken to a public, almost charity, emergency room. Flattened onto a stretcher, I was told I had this dramatic, mysterious disease. Like in a soap opera, only, only I wasn't going to die several episodes later, lovely and untouched, but I was going to live, live and wait for the betrayal of my perfect body for the final infamous entrance on the arm of the almost famous semi-celeb. Semi-celeb? Oh, those are the people usually too high and too soft to walk the distance it takes to hail a cab. So because I was young, I didn't understand that illness is really democratic. You don't earn it. Deserve better or not, it comes. I lost the magic ran faster in brighter circles, brighter and faster, yet there was this constant rush of fear like a seashell stuck to my ear. Do you know how many people told me I was a genius? My neurologist fell in love with me and prescribed the standard infusions. I was only 22, and really he had nothing more to offer. He brought me groceries and climbed into my bed, and then went to Iowa to study pig farmers who heard voices and made predictions about the end of the world. Finally, after several years, he wrote to tell me he'd been mistaken. After studying these men, knee deep in mud plugged into heaven, he believed I wasn't sick. He said, so this kind of surgery of your brain is perfectly aligned to let in God's messages. <laughs> Suddenly, I became a spiritual telex. I was an instrument of grace, mystic, a miracle. Hallelujah! I redeem! Hallelujah! 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 Fear is a funny thing. Even when you know it's waiting for you around the corner, you turn on the lights, it can still surprise you. Take cockroaches. You're sure they're going to be waiting for you in the bathroom, and you've decided they're not going to scare you. <laughs> Before you... Ah! Still they do! several generations. <laughs> Cockroach generations. Anyway, I look the sucker directly in the face and
was talking about cockroaches. No, fear. I was talking about fear. It's a funny thing, you know. I'm not afraid anymore. Nothing really scares me, yeah. As I see it, you got two choices. You give up or you go on. I tried to give up, but I kept on popping up to the surface like my own cork. <laughs> the trick I found is to stay far enough above water to keep from swallowing yourself. <laughs> Once, I met a girl who was in recovery and denial at the same time. <coughs> Deep denial. All these people looking for a new name flailing about sticking labels on one another, packaging themselves, generalizing all over the place, dependent, codependent. What's a big deal? Isn't it just a given? Hey, what's the matter? You depend on sunshine? Hey, you seem to have this codependence on that oxygen thing. Hey, <laughs> you need love? Well, be careful. Not too much now. It can become an addiction being held. I admit, I can't back a car down a curved driveway or find my way to Jersey. And you may laugh at the direction I take to make sense, but I do not need somebody else's road map to find my inner self. Nobody is as cracked up as they ought to be. My sister has been living like a gerbil going round and round for years, like a gerbil, without complaint. She called me the other day, quite upset, to tell me that after a lifetime of carefully flossing and regular dental checkups, she developed a pain in her jaw and probably gum disease. She was even more upset when she returned, when she returned home from the dentist, calling to tell me that she didn't have gum disease at all. The dentist said that she'd simply been biting down too hard for too long. I thought you would drill just a little hole to relieve the pain. Carol, <laughs> I said, what you are talking about is not root canal. It's lobotomy. <laughs> <laughs> My first husband used to tell me that I should have a libido out of me. You have to be in balance. Balance? Is a life of a balancing act? The world is in balance. He insisted. Isn't that called stasis? Isn't that why everyone's standing around with their thumbs up their aspirations? Nobody's as cracked up as they ought to be. <laughs> Doc's back, <laughs> holding my hand, babbling along, babbling as they wheel me down the hall, babbling about claustrophobia, about not being able to breathe, being afraid of not being able to breathe, which I don't get. I could live in a closet. I could live with a bag over my head. But when I motor back into the MRI, my chest is stricken. And I'm thinking, is this claustrophobia? Or just panic? Or is it the same thing? Ah! I'm in this tunnel, and I remember lying in the back seat of my parents' station wagon in the Lincoln Tunnel. Only the smell is missing, which was exotic for a kid from the birds. Not like they all, which just stunk. Anyway, I'm getting calmed down, relaxed, looking for passing headlights, when a voice from nowhere says, Are you all right? Oh, scares me to death! <laughs> He's taking pictures. Can he see the fear inside my brain? Doc's back, looking old, because now he's
he's got these furrows between his eyes. You know, those lines that you see on mothers of young children wobbling away. Psychic sight lines channeling their children towards safety. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. He's not looking at me anymore like I'm an almond joy. Well, <laughs> no, not candy, nothing sweet. He's a concern. Well, it's not conclusive. It doesn't mean anything. It's hard to tell. But uh, we can interpret what? You. We found, sighted, measured, uh, located UBOs. Hey, Goldie. We're back in Iowa now. In your brain. Yeah? Unidentified bright objects. Which I suppose, I ask, must be better than unidentified dumb objects or uh, bright objects unknown? <laughs> Isn't that just a condition of growing up in America? UDOs? <laughs> okay, so he doesn't get it. <laughs> so what we have here isn't really pain. Your brain is just misinterpreting it as pain, so to speak. It just feels like pain. Oh. So, I've got pain that's not really pain. It just hurts. Phew! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's not real, how are you even going to try positive thinking? Could be I'm about to have a semi-orgasm. Semi-orgasm? Oh. That's when you should have hailed the cab and gone home. <laughs> so where does that leave me? Some Iowa of the mind? Where does that leave me? It's late at night, and I'm playing with my brain that's playing with me. And I figure, we all got these bright, dark spaces to get lost in. Short circuits where love ought to be. What you believe will kill you. The pain they claim is mainly in my brain. I've got it! Yes, I've got it! <laughs> Some of us are stuck in the mud. But all of us look at the star. <laughs> Ida Lupino, my favorite philosopher. Ida, yeah, you know, she can almost make me cry. Popping a couple of beers in bed alone, watching late night TV. The way she had to hold it back that single tear. You could tell because the way the side of her mouth quivered. But she never caved. She hung tough. She knew no matter who reached out, she was alone. I'm so tough, never cave. It can almost make you cry.
Like the other biggie myths generated by suburban parents, the strange man who'd show up uninvited, crash the party with his dirty yellow cigarette, some generality stuck. <clears throat> About the colored boys, which I later felt was a misrepresentation, expecting when I was young, very, and living in an all-white blizzard white zone and had not actually seen one in person, <laughs> colored. I imagined they'd spill out Oh, pink, puce, yellow, and orange, some huge Crayola box of flesh, human-shaped. To the point, they told us black men smelt differently. Well, experience informed me, number one, that the dirty yellow cigarette was white, and that black men do smell different, better, intoxicatingly good after an intimate experience, especially after that. I've, I am so enamored of that fragrance, I have crept up behind some dusky man in an elevator or uh, paused at a street crossing, eyes closed and sniffed, inhaled. I've been frightening, yes it's true. There are so many better we neutralize by calling differences so many better size and color and scent, which is what all the other lies are made up from for, to cover the fear, the fear of the powerful, that its rights might be challenged. Give the others some betters. So is this racism? Oh, ugly word. <laughs> is it racism to sniff strangers because they are delicious after all and different? is not a dirty word. Smell, not pejorative. But how can I come out to the world and admit I've smelt enough men of all colors in myriad situations to approximate a scientific study? <laughs> yes, it's true, a, a representative sample. <laughs> I did, I do, and I can, can testify, testify as to why I go about stopping <laughs> the world for more. Eyes closed, sucking up close Forcing frightened brothers off elevators two floors below their original destination. <laughs> <laughs>
Ah, vanity. It was also not about having an instrument of power, pulsing flesh, more than some men weaponize it. And me, pit hungry on the floor. I thought it would be more fun, as well as more serious, than that false titty witty titty power. You know, you shake up, you use up, you lust other people's hunger, other unflailing needs, unselfish mountains of flesh dedicated physically and spiritually to supper. Real and imagine weapons? Ha, hardly. Moves set aside. I am secure enough to be equal and not coy and withholding. Because lie, winky wink, I can take it or leave it. Oh, so, not a goody good girl worried about the. Ooh, State of my knickers after the crash, boom, bam, has left me skirtless. As to my bonafide feminist PC at all, I won't be cuntable in to first <laughs> apologizing to the tribal gender honoring approval in order to enjoy my own imaginary member. Or Ask some daddy girl permission to carry. I simply issued myself a license. It is mine to have and to hold. I'd grow one again, if not for the certainty. It nothing compared to the first comparison. I decided, so to speak, to let it stand, ride the experience over the horizon towards the safe. Oh, and sacred, yes, mem mem oh, and modified. as if it's not enough that me and my kid, we started preschool each morning. We, of course, fuck the patriarchy. <laughs> we, two strong girls, she, teeny panther, fist in the air, before she could breathe. <laughs> As for him, the one I'm practicing the face kegels on for, <laughs> the hows and whys of him are not the story. The quest was my pulsating desire, made flesh, mindless of any man. The night began, <coughs> my head resting between his eyes, <coughs> After having thrown in plenty of those tongue curl ups, I closed my eyes and drifting image myself, the perfect male ass. I mean, what was I gonna be? A dangling participle penis? <laughs> I had to become the sublime prime time TV ass. It got me hot feeling that beautiful. Anyway. Somewhere down the line, I let go. I opened up, and I felt my own penis grow right in front of me. I was slapping the tap of his stomach, pleasure drumming the bottom of his six pack. Oh. All right, I'm going to have to airbrush it as far as it goes from here. So I placed my hands on his perfect pecs, and I let him find the rhythm. But I just have to hold it my cock, so I start rubbing it up and down fast, and soon I can take my hands away because I don't need to touch my cock anymore to feel it. It's just so sexy, bitch, slapping up my heart. Uh, 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 I begin to whew, smell like a man. A <laughs> uh, 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 polo player, a uh, scuba diver, a FedEx guy in shorts. <laughs> Which really asphalt. Until I become the roster man. 
the one who works at the organic veggie stand. <laughs> the one my baby girl loves, who calls out to me adoringly, Mama, Mama, where is that chocolate man? The chocolate man who takes care of the salad? Cowboys on our horses, riding our ponies back to the barn. 